the Buddha's first instructions to his son didn't mention meditation. But they were all about living the kind of life where meditation can flourish. And it's important that we keep that in mind, that meditation doesn't exist in a vacuum. The skills that you need to meditate have to come from being very sensitive about your actions, the things you do, the things you say, things you think about as you go through the day, your values, the decisions you make. These are all part of training the mind. Meditation gives you food when the mind can settle down and have a sense of ease, refreshment, well-being through the meditation. That in turn gives you the strength in order to keep up with the duties of a good life. The Buddha told his son, before you act, try to anticipate what the results of your actions are going to be. Otherwise, you don't just act on your moods or on impulse. You have to remember that your actions are going to have an impact on other people. This is what's meant by that word that the Buddha uses in tandem with skillfulness. That question of what is skillful, what is unskillful, goes together with the question what is blameless and what is blameworthy. In other words, you act in a way that causes harm. It's blameworthy. Why do we have to harm ourselves or harm other people? And if we're insensitive to the harm we do, how are you going to be sensitive to the actions of the mind that create disturbances within? You need training first in looking at your actions. This is what training in generosity and training in virtue are all about. Generosity teaches you there are ways of acting that on the surface may seem like you're giving up something, but you're actually gaining and the people around you are gaining as well. You begin to see the connection between your well-being and their well-being. This is what enables us to live with one another and also nourish good qualities in the mind. Generosity here doesn't mean just being generous with things. It means generous with your time, generous with your knowledge, generous with your skills. That willingness to be helpful, that willingness to give. is a quality of mind that needs to be nurtured. It's part of our goodness, or as in the traditional teachings, it's part of our merit. That's one of those terms that's slighted a lot in Western Buddhism. It sounds like brownie points, Boy Scout badges. But if you think about it in terms of inner worth, our worth as human beings comes from our ability to be generous and to be virtuous. Virtuous here means learning how to restrain yourself from unskillful behavior. Seeing that whatever you might gain from that kind of behavior is not really worth the harm that it does. And again, you're being asked to be sensitive to harm. Look at the way you're trying to be happy. What do you anticipate about your actions? You don't just act because you feel like it. And John Sawat used to be very critical of people who would just say whatever popped into their mind without, as they say in Thai, straining it first, running it through the strainer to see what refinement can be made. And then you speak. You have to think about when you say something, what's the impact going to be on you and on other people? When you do something, what's the impact going to be? Even when you use your senses, when you look at something, what's the impact of the looking? In other words, what impact is that going to have on your mind? Is that going to create scars or weaknesses in your mind that's going to, that are going to make it harder for you to do the right thing when you're with other people? You begin to see that even interior things have an impact outside. There's no clear line between what you're thinking and what you're doing. So the training of the mind requires not only just what you're doing while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but having an attitude that you want to be blameless in all of your activities. 
why you're acting. Look to see what unexpected harmful consequences you may be giving rise to through your action. When you're saying something you realize that it's hurtful, just stop. Don't just go along with the momentum. Even if it's something that's true, you have to look at the right time, the right place. Remember the Buddha's instructions on how to speak. First, is it true? Okay, if it's true, then you go to the next question, which is, is it beneficial? And then the next question, if it's beneficial, is this the right time to say something pleasant or something displeasing? In other words, there are times when you do have to be harsh. Not from ill will, but out of concern. People are doing things that are hurtful. and. If you can say something sharp that stops it, well, that's important, to be willing to say that. When you've done something, look at the consequences so you can learn from them. If you saw, that, see that you've done something unskillful, something blameworthy, then you try to figure out some way not to do it again. Don't just leave it as a mistake. Ask yourself, okay, here's a mistake. What can I do so I don't repeat that mistake? Otherwise your life is just littered with mistakes and you don't learn anything from them. What else do you have to learn from if not from your mistakes? We're so used to thinking, well, you can just go online and pick up all kinds of information. But the really important things you have to learn are the, the things you learn from what you're doing. When you've done something well. Notice that. When you've done something wrong, notice that and try to learn from both. This way you get more and more sensitive to the fact that your actions do have an impact. I've told you about that book I was asked to review one time, about positive psychology. and I was asked to see what kind of a Buddhist take could be made on the topic of positive psychology. And what I came up with was that they totally ignored the issue of karma. They talked about doing things where you find fulfillment, doing things where you find satisfaction. Well, there's no question about or no interest in how your actions are going to have impact on other people. That was felt to be unscientific for some reason. Yet how can your happiness be whole unless you take into consideration the impact your actions have on others? So you re practice virtue to restrain yourself from harmful behavior, and you practice generosity out of the knowledge that if you're going to get something good out of life, you have to be willing to give. There's a sharing that has to go on. Like when you meditate, some people come and they say, I've been sitting here for X number of days or weeks or months or years, and I don't seem to be getting anything out of it. Well, ask yourself, what are you putting into it? And learn to be truthful with yourself. The Buddha's instructions to rule has started with that principle. You've got to be truthful, or else you have no worth as a contemplative. But what are you going to contemplate if you're lying to yourself, lying to other people? Of all the precepts, this is the one that the Buddha was strictest about. He says, if you feel no sense of shame about a deliberate lie, there's no evil you can't do. It's interesting that lying is the precept of all the ones that he was most critical of. Because again, when you're meditating, if you're used to lying to yourself, used to covering things up, there's no opportunity for insight at all. And if you ignore the harm that your behavior has had on other people, again, that's a huge wall in the mind. You've developed an insensitivity. It's like the kind of person who gets tired of hearing other people speak. You know, the proverbial husband who's tired of his wife yelling at him, and so he ends up going deaf as he grows old. Well, of course, the problem is he's not deaf just to her, he's deaf to everybody. And if you're blind and deaf to the harmful impact that your actions have, you're going to be blind and deaf to all kinds of things, especially inside, because the disturbance that the mind can create, even very subtle disturbances by the way you perceive things, the way you think about things, even the way you breathe, 
that's a lot more difficult to see than the harm you're doing to other people. So these qualities all go together. Virtue, concentration, discernment, generosity, virtue, and meditation. They all support one another in training you to be a blameless person. That's a quality we don't hear much about in our society. But in order to be able to live with yourself, to have a sense that your happiness is a whole and healthy thing, you have to keep that dimension in mind as well. You want a happiness that's blameless. Only then can it be true.